You know, for nearly a century, this has been the go-to site for legendary football games, concerts, and now even a COVID-19 testing site. Yeah, the pandemic has forced this historic landmark to cancel hundreds of events, losing over $16 million in revenue. So the Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation needs your help to keep it afloat. Visit inspire2022.org's America Stadium Needs America campaign for more info and do us a favor, give what you can. Yeah. We really do want to create even more memories and history right here. Absolutely. You know, by the way, it is also an historic year for the Super Bowl halftime show. 30 years mm. of memorable performances, and you better believe E.T. has been there every step of the way. Step by step. When the new kids performed at the Super Bowl halftime mm -hmm. back in 19... 30 years ago this year. That was the first time, you know, that they had a major pop act do a big, massive production. We did it with Disney, which at the time, you know, I was trying to be a tough young man. I was like, why are we doing this Disney thing? This one's for the children. To look back now and see what halftime has become, it's a pretty cool honor. You have performed actually at two Super Bowl halftime shows. I have mm -hmm. in Minneapolis way back in the day. It was very cold outside, but it was hot in that stadium. <laughs> Gloria's first halftime performance was back in 1992. E.T. was invited to rehearsals. The then 34-year-old trained like an athlete in preparation. I've been working out very hard, probably about two and a half hours a day. <sighs> <sighs> By 1993, the world's biggest pop star at the time, Michael Jackson, was headlining the halftime show here at the Rose Bowl. I am so excited to be part of Super Bowl 27. Wow, From then on, E.T. started our tradition of taking our spot inside and all around the stadium. The Walking to the stage, one and said, "It's not normal. To, it's not to, normal to be this stressed. You know, I can have a heart attack." In 1999, Cher told us she was absolutely freaking out leading up to singing the national anthem. I was thinking this morning, if I screw up tonight, I have to start a new career and move to someplace else. <laughs> you rocked. You were awesome. Oh. <laughs> The new decade brought a new generation of pop stars to the halftime stage. In 2001, then-couple Britney and Justin sang alongside Aerosmith. Is it hard to keep a relationship with you guys are being so busy? Um, it's a little hard, but it's all about trust, and he loves me and I love him, and we just try to work it out, so. Justin returned to the Super Bowl stage with Janet Jackson in 2004. <laughs> And the phrase wardrobe malfunction would be ingrained into pop culture forever. E.T. was backstage with Justin moments later, still unaware of the controversy he'd created. You got nasty with Miss Jackson. Hey, man. <laughs> it's every man's dream. We thought it would be cool instead of me just coming up by myself to kind of mix it up with her. But it is Prince's 2007 performance in the midst of a Miami rainstorm that is wildly hailed as the greatest in Super Bowl history. Can I play this guitar? Especially in the weather, purple rain is a perfect song. And when it comes to Super Bowl royalty, look no further than Queen B. Starting in 2004, when she belted out the national anthem. In 2013, her headlining act was so electrifying, the power went out. God was on my side, so I'm very, very happy that it went well and the power went out after. Okay, that's what I said. <laughs> Wasn't you? Were you the power outage? Did you? Oh, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> Beyonce returned three years later to kick off Coldplay's 2016 halftime show. Okay, ladies, now let's get information. Many said she stole the show. Taraji P. Henson didn't help the situation. During Coldplay's performance, she tweeted, quote, Yes, hashtag Maroon 5 is life to me. I don't know how, if you know how it goes down in the suites. Put a lot of drinks in there. Kool-Aid. I'm human. I, make a mis I made a mistake. You're human. It happens. Come on, I drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs>
Of course, Maroon 5 did headline in 2019. Adam's shirtless moves ripped straight from the Jagger playbook made him the most memed man in halftime history. During his only Super Bowl interview, Adam told me he had been training hard. I've been treating it like I'm about to play in the Super Bowl myself, working out a lot. Yeah? Even taking care of myself for the past 30 days. <laughs> And with just three days to go before the weekend makes his halftime debut, Make it, you ready. last year's co-headliner J-Lo has this advice. Good luck. Let's get it. It was intense. I'm happy that it's not me this year and it's the weekend. <laughs>